I'm gonna have her back lit just like so. And this is gonna go ahead and hit the back of our subject. So we're gonna come from here, hit the back of our subject and illuminate her back. These are like actually really cool shots. Yes. It's really cool too because I, I, I slowed down. I wasn't just shooting, like I wasn't just random doing stuff. Like we actually like really got the shot. Like we like slowed it down and really like. Ah! <laughs> we really slowed it down and did it. Taxi. I ain't gonna lie, this is crazy. You gonna fight me, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Framework. Home. Like just like that, boom. Using just so for the six frameworks of composition, you guys, we're gonna be going over the rule of thirds. Um, in terms of the rule of thirds grid, you know what I'm saying? How to divide it, how to place your subject on certain lines. We're gonna be going over leading lines, which is like using certain lines to be able to make give you somewhere for you to like, you know, visually focus on. Like you guys may see that these this horizon right here, the horizon line, and it leads you guys right to me to look at me. Um, we're gonna go over framing, like how to frame, you know, using objects in your foreground or background to help you frame or create a create a physical frame. Let's say, for example, I'm doing if I'm doing if I'm on a photo right here. This, this space is still framed. You know what I'm saying? This is a framing. Or let's say, for example, I have foreground, middle ground, background, and the, the foreground's on both sides of my subject. I'll show you guys some ideas of that as well. Framing. I'm gonna be going over symmetry and patterns as well. Um, symmetry, repetition, and patterns to create, you know, visual and appealing structure. Um, ne negative space. Negative space, which is basically, you know, empty space being left around the subject on purpose. So you're using space as a prop, or you know, you're having reasoning behind the space that you have. Like, like you have your them set off to this side and, and this third of the of the image. You know what I'm saying? But you have all this extra space, this negative space that you that you're used on purpose. You know, you have negative space that you're used on purpose. Then we're gonna have depth. Depth, we're gonna be creating layers within an image, foreground, middle ground, and background to create layers within an image, you know? So we're gonna be doing that today, getting straight into that. What to do, familiar? It's your boy Young Chop Chisel. Um, we're about to go ahead and get straight into it. K is on her way. Yeah, so oh my gosh, she's back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <sighs> I know, right? But we're about to go ahead and get straight into it, man. So today we're gonna be trying to make a viral video. That's the goal of today. You guys, if you guys see the last episode of PNG Culture, it was pretty vibey. Unfiltered though? Yeah. Like, unfiltered is hard, though. Hard, it's harder than hard. raw talk. Unfiltered? Like, like unfiltered. unfiltered. Like, hello. Working out or weightlifting will make you look manly. Like nothing, I'm loving it so far. I just love inspiring women to like fall in love with the gym. And I, you're only gonna, you're gonna get older regardless. So you might as well get older doing what you love. So like, don't let outside noise or anything else like deter you from doing what you're actually passionate about. Because I, I know, right? Thank you. Appreciate you. You're so cool. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, yeah. I've been thinking about making a compilation of like all the videos that I'm backed up on and just like putting them all in one thing, like all the behind the scenes and be like a month in the life. That would be crazy. Would that be crazy? I think that would be, y'all might actually really like that. That might be fire. A huge video and edit it over the course of like two weeks and be like a month in the life. That actually, that's gonna be a massive video, but you guys might actually watch it. Wow. But yeah, man, so I'm just rambling. Let's get into it. I don't really know what the plan is for today, but I need to try to have a plan. I'm trying to like create these promos for these brands, stuff like that, so that we can go full time which is overall the goal. So we're about to see what location we can do this shoot at. We're gonna do a dance video today, um, get a little bit of, a little bit in for PNG Cultures, um, PNG Unfiltered, and then also maybe do some pictures of the different camera straps and stuff. So I gotta drop an order off as well. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get into that. I'm dressed right now, I'm about to go ahead and make sure I can wash my dish because I just ate me some nice, a nice parfait. And uh, yeah. What's up you guys, we're in a really cool location right now. We just got permission from the police officer to shoot out here. I always recommend you guys to get permission from, you know, authorities and things like that before you guys do anything crazy. We're right behind the airport right now. Last time we shot a video here, a lot of you guys raised a lot of controversy saying that, you know, that's how you get, that's how you get in trouble. Like you're, 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 you're promoting, you're promoting um, trespassing. I'm not promoting trespassing, you guys. It's all fun, it was all for fun and games, but always get you some permission before you go anywhere, you know, like this as such. But why, he, he left, he said he didn't want to be in our way. He was like, he was just out here patrolling. That boy said, if you ever need anything, he said, you guys are local, if you ever need anything, I'm like, check, mic, check, one, two, one, two. What the hell is wrong with you? The, the tortoise done turned around. Like, bro, where you going? Does he not know how to get, does he not know how to get up the curb? That's probably what it is. He probably don't know how to get up the curb. All right, you guys, we're about to go ahead. I'm about to do a mic check real quick. Amazing, you know what I'm saying? The microphone is checked in. We're clipped up. I got my um, lighting stands here, you guys, that I'm gonna be using today. You guys always keep asking me, like, oh my God, what lights did you have in the video? Newer, bro, N-E-E-W-E-R. If I don't link it down below, go search it up, bro. You know what I'm saying? I love having the affiliate links, but it's not too super important to me, so if you guys can't find it in the affiliate links, just look it up, it's my newer, N-E-E-W-E-R, lighting stands. And then, boom, I got these two, but I put my own, like, heads on them, though. Like, my own lighting heads on them when I, like, do it, but. 
we're getting these two together. I'm gonna be having two uh, 8200s put together as well. And um, I'm gonna show you guys like my little setup, I guess, as far as like, you know, the lighting and what I'm gonna have. So I'm gonna have like a backlight and a front light. This is the sandwiching. We're gonna be creating composition today. Um, kind of just, I guess, showing you guys like lighting, but also showing you guys composition. We're really going over composition today. We're going over the six frameworks of composition. I have the notes in my pocket that I took for you guys. I'm trying to do better. So like, not necessarily scripting the videos, but kind of bullet pointing the videos so that way I kind of know the direction that we're going. So for the six frameworks of composition, you guys, we're gonna be going over the rule of thirds um, in terms of the rule of thirds grid, you know what I'm saying? How to divide it, how to place your subject on certain lines. We're gonna be going over leading lines, which is like using certain lines to be able to make, give you somewhere for you to like, you know, visually focus on. Like you guys may see that these, this horizon right here, the horizon line, and it leads you guys right to me to look at me. Um, we're gonna go over framing, like how to frame, you know, using objects in your foreground or background to help you frame or create a, create a physical frame. Let's say for example, I'm doing, if I'm doing, if I'm on a photo right here, these, this space is still framed you know what i'm saying this is a framing or let's say for example i have foreground middle ground background and the, the foreground on both sides of my subject i'll show you guys some ideas of that as well framing i'm going to be going over symmetry and patterns as well um symmetry repetition and patterns to create you know visual and appealing structure um ne negative space negative space which is basically you know empty space being left around the subject on purpose so you're using space as a prop or you know you're having reasoning behind the space that you have like like you have your set off to this side in, in this third of the of the image you know what i'm saying but you have all this extra space, this negative space that you that you're used on purpose. You know, you have negative space that you're used on purpose. Then we're gonna have depth. Depth. We're gonna be creating layers within an image, foreground, middle ground, and background to create layers within an image. You know, so we're gonna be doing that today, getting straight into that. And uh, yeah, so that's the framework. That's those are the six frameworks we're gonna go over. We're gonna first start off with the rule of thirds. I'm gonna give you guys how I set up my set, like my everything here, and then I'm gonna go through like you know the frameworks of the rule of thirds grid and uh, let you guys know how we do that. Let's do it. All right, you guys, so I have these two little like mini soft boxes that I love to use for my lights. I have one for the backlight and one for the front light. This back this is gonna be for the backlight, the smaller one. The bigger one's gonna be for the front light so that we can have more, you know, going onto the subject's face. I put them onto both of my 8200s and I place these 8200s on top of these lighting stands just like so. So these lighting stands have little like notches that I use and I literally screw them into my 8200 raw right onto the, right onto the lighting stand. I don't use, I don't use a Bowens mount adapter or anything like that. I've been like kind of falling in love with, you know, with falling in love with the simplicity of things, like, you know, being able to like get, get the shots the way that I want them without having, you know, do too much extra stuff. And I feel like when I start doing all the extra stuff, it makes me not even want to, you know, create as much anymore. And it makes me not want to be as creative and you know, not, not have as much fun with the shots that I'm, that I'm creating. So I'd rather, you know, kind of be very simple with my setup and things of that nature. So that way when I do things, I don't have to worry so much about, you know, whether it has to be like, oh my God, like I have to have this or I have to have that. Like, I don't want to have to be like that. So this is gonna be my A light. A is like for the group. I have this on group A and that light I'm gonna have is group B. You guys always know my main light is always my A light. And my main light always has my bigger modifier. This is my main light. It's gonna have the bigger modifier on it. I'm gonna put it on just like so. And with the, these little modifiers, you guys, it straps on. So it's like literally like it's a Velcro strap. You wrap the Velcro strap around and it tightens just like so, bam. And it's a little nylon and Velcro strap. And it's literally just simple, easy like this. And you can raise this up as high as you want. Want, and I always have it kind of angled down towards my subject a little bit too. And I like using these lighting stands because they're a lot lighter than C stands, so they're easy to use. But the best part about it is being that they're so small, they won't get blown over by the wind because there's just enough weight from the 8200 to make it stay still. You know what I'm saying? So just like so. Same thing over here with this one as well. I screw this one on the bottom of here as well. This is gonna be my B light. So I have this one on group B. Anytime I have a B light, you guys I always have my B light at half um, the power of the A light. So if the A light is blasting off at eight, half of eight is 16 for everybody who does not know eight one over eight is more powerful than one over 16 even though 16 is a bigger number and the reason that one over eight is more powerful than um, one over 16 is because it's closer to one so when the numbers are closer to one one is like one of the most powerful like the almost the most powerful flash power it's um having it the output of the light at its highest power and the closer you get to one the more powerful the light will be so what we're working with right now are going to be two lights we're going to have these at half of each other so this one's going to be at one over 16 it's going to be at one over eight and you can work with this and play around with this as well inside of your um inside of your flash trigger onto your camera i'm going to get my flash trigger in my camera now to show you guys the setup for that as well all right you guys so i have my sony a7s3 
and I'm also using my Godox AD200. Um, well, those are, those are the ones that I'm using on here, but I have my Godox S, um, I mean, well, 3XS, you guys, that I'm gonna be using this today. I love this little trigger. It's very small, it's very compact, it's very easy. It has little buttons on the side. I love playing with it. I'll put the link down below to this as well as gonna be my Amazon storefront under my like my can't live without. It's very small, bro, and like you can charge it with the USB-C charger on the back. It literally slides on just like so, and it has little connectors to communicate with the Sony. Took the screen out, boom, we're ready to shoot. So it has the flash powers on here, it has the channels, and it has the groups and everything. I'm also partnering this on my um, PNG strap from PNG Culture, you guys. This is the new red colorway. This is not, well, by the time this video's out, this should be out right now, and you guys should be able to pick it up. And uh, yeah, let me see, just like so. I have my, I'm gonna have my A at one over 16, and my B is gonna be at one over 32, just to test everything out, play around everything. There's gonna be periodic loud noises because we are right by an airport. I don't know if you guys noticed that yet or not, but we are behind the airport. So you guys are gonna continue to see and hear a lot of aeroplanes and things of that nature. All righty? All right. All right, we're about to go ahead and start, you guys. The first thing we're gonna be talking about is rule of thirds, all right? So the rule of thirds grid, I have it on my camera and that's really what I use. The rule of thirds grid, if you don't already know, it breaks is the 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 it breaks these the screen up three parts right so there's gonna be a, a line here and it's gonna be about a line here and it's gonna have two horizon lines coming through you want to be able to line your subject up on one of those line or one of those lines let's say for example if you're shooting vertically right you want to be able to line your subject up when shooting vertically you want to be able to line your subject up on that line so let's say for example the top line needs to be hitting here with my subject the bottom line is be hitting mid so you want to be able to line your subject up on some portion of the line and be able to frame them incorrectly within that rule of thirds there's also a rule of ninth grid that you can use as well but we're gonna be using the rule of thirds grid today i might try to break it up like like through the edit so you guys can see how i shot the photo uh, all right you guys so basically i'm gonna be having her kind of like set up right here and on my rule of thirds grid it's gonna be splitting her i'm gonna try to like see if i can do it on my phone and show the image from my phone all right so i have a recording i have a recording from my phone to kind of show where the rule of thirds grid is and it's going to kind of show you how i'm matching up my subject with that rule of thirds grid so as you guys can see i have her fitting inside of the middle of the third you guys see that right there just like so inside of the middle of the thirds so literally i don't have her posing or anything yet but i'm just kind of trying to show you guys the composition of how i have it lined up just like so right in the middle of the rule of thirds grid just like that boom i can take my picture let's say for example i want to cut it to a quarter third shot i can put her in a rule of thirds like this i can match the rule of thirds up on her on her eyes okay look up real quick there you go hold it match the rule of thirds get up on her eyes just like that boom like just like that boom using just only using the rule of thirds and if you want to make it look a little bit more dramatic you can even pull it over and put her on one of the rule of third lines just like so and that creates that space in the side that we're talking about there okay so we're still on the topic of rule of thirds you guys so i'm going to go ahead and set up my lighting and stuff so i can show you guys a little bit more of what i'm talking about so when it comes to framing you guys I'm gonna set my, set you guys back here so y'all can see everything. I'm gonna set my key light, which is gonna be my main light, up here to her right, just like so, and have it flashing over to, you know, expose her side right here. And I'm also gonna have my B light, so, you know, gr group A, I'm gonna have my B light coming from the back. I call this the sandwich method, okay? So I call this the sandwich method. I'm literally gonna take this one right here, I have it crossing over, I'm gonna sandwich her in between, and I'm gonna put this one right here on this side, to capture from the back side or from the side just like boom just like so so i'm gonna put it like this you see like this now i can have this light coming at her side just like a sandwich method but i even have the sun kind of back there playing as well so the sun's back there giving me a little bit of light this one's right here this one's sandwiching her right in between it looks really good let me go ahead and make sure all these are turned on Make sure this one's turned on too. Just like so. And we're gonna make sure that they're connected. Yep, literally. And this is the sandwich method. I love this setup right here, bro. Like, you guys see this? I have one light, my A light. I have her in the middle, I have the B light. I call this the sandwich, okay? We're gonna see her right here in the middle. Go ahead, look right here, Mike. Three, two, and one. Come on, amazing. I didn't even, I didn't even do really much yet and it's already amazing. I'm putting her in the middle of this rule of thirds grid right here. Putting her right in the middle. I have her squished right in the middle of the thirds grid. Just like so, I'm matching the grid up on her eyes. And at these intersections of the lines on, on the rule of thirds grid, these are where you wanna place your subject, okay? Like let's say for example, 
I have this on her eye, as you guys can see. I have a place right there. This makes it nice and even, okay? Boom, it makes for a nice, even shot. Everything is framed well because I'm placing her on the intersection. For example, if I were to shoot it just like this and I didn't place her in the intersection, I'd place her in the middle. I'm gonna show you guys. Look right here, okay? Place her right in the middle. There's too much headspace. It's too much headspace up there because I didn't place her on one of the intersecting lines. It's still a good picture, but it's not a, a great picture. Now, when I place her on one of those lines, put her eyes right through to one of those lines, bam. That makes for a great picture, okay, you guys? So, another real thing that I like to use is I have this one right here. Plus, you guys put YouTube off to the side so you guys can see a little bit better. I have this one right here at 1 over... Hold on. I have this one right here at 1 over 16. This one right here at 1 over 16. Airplane, man. This one right here is at 1 over 16. This one right here is at 1 over 32, okay? So I have the backlight always, anytime I shoot in studio or on location, I have the backlight at half the power of the front light. As I said before, the closer this number is to one, the more powerful the light is gonna be. So this is at one over 16, this is at one over eight. We're dealing with fractions, okay? So half of 32 is 16, half of 16, is eight so if i were to do it i would always split them in half you guys okay i hope that makes sense to you guys so just like so i'm gonna have her pose one more time look straight right here three two and one my f is at four i'm gonna go up to f5 bow an amazing image you guys an amazing image amazing image i'm lining her up in that rule of thirds just like so and it's oh it's coming out so good even if i were to go down and do like a lower shot you guys just like so i can still line her up as you guys can see on that rule of thirds lining it up right there between the eyes and it makes perfect framing. Every single time it's gonna give you a perfect shot. You're, you're never gonna lack. You're always gonna have a perfect shot. Look, hold it, three, two, and one, one more. Even if I zoom out, if I zoom all the way out, but I line that line up on her face, I zoomed out, but I still have that line on her face. Look at that. I got her in the middle third grid with the line on her face and it still gave me a perfect shot. This is insane. Just like so, any, any distance. I can back up super far from her and I can still get an amazing shot. I'm gonna back all the way up, right? I'm still gonna put the line on her face even from far away, you guys, I'm far away. I line it up on her face, even from far away, and I take the shot. It still frames her up perfectly because I'm using this rule of thirds grid, okay? So, I hope you guys kind of understand the rule of thirds grid. You want to make sure that you're matching your subject up on these intersection of the, the intersecting lines, you know what I'm saying? Even if you're shooting horizontal, I'll show you guys horizontal shot as well. If I'm shooting horizontal and I want to get some of the background in here as well, see there's horizon lines uh, um, going along it. Just like so, I'm going to line it up. I see this horizon line. I'm going to match the horizon line to the middle of the third grid. So I hope you guys can see this. The middle of the third grid, I'm going to match the horizon line up. I'm going to match the top line of the third with her, with her face. So I hope you guys can see this right here. Boom. With her face right here, bam. Amazing shot. I'm going to lower myself down. I'm going I'm to I'm lower myself down just like so. Latch it up with that line of her face. Boom, amazing shot. See, look, look, boom. I've got her in the middle. I got her in the middle. Just like so, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. She's in the middle. I have that top line on her face. I have the horizon line on the bottom. Bam, amazing shot. So as you guys can see, this right here, look, I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to show y'all again. The horizon line is on that bottom third. Her face is hitting up that top third. See what I'm saying? That top line, that bottom line. And she's framed in to the middle of thirds. So you guys are always asking me about composition and framing. This is exactly how I do it, okay? This is how I do it. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next framework of composition, you guys. After rule of thirds comes leading lines, okay? I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about leading lines, play around leading lines as well. Leading lines kind of comes after the rule of thirds, if you guys may have seen. When it comes to leading lines, the leading lines really goes around with your environment. What do you see? What is around you, okay? So as you guys can see, these right here, this horizon line leads to our subject. This line right here, if you guys can see this line right here, see that right there, this little green grass line? It leads to our subject. This leads to our subject. This, this, this body of water is acting as an arrow as well and it leads to our subject. So if all of this is leading to our subject, this is creating leading lines towards our subject. We have the horizon in the back leading to our subject. Even some of the clouds can, can, can create leading lines that will lead to our subject as well, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and see exactly how we can line this up using the rule of third, but also using leading lines, everything that we just learned. So I'm gonna line this shot up. Let me see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do it vertical. I'm gonna line it up just like this, but I'm trying to see, ding, where do I wanna put it at? How do I wanna place this? Where do I feel like would look best, right? 
And personally, I kind of like how these lines right here are leading to my subject. I like how these lines are leading to my subject. I could shoot her right here in this location where we can see where this, this gravel is leading towards her and pointing at her and it makes it nice and even, right? Just like so. Bam, one more, just like so with all these lines leading up. So this is really, I'm trying to show you guys how to find, make something out of nothing. Because a lot of the times, you know, you're in a location and you're trying to figure it out. You're trying to force yourself to find a shot. You know what I'm saying? It's very easy to, to, to make the shot come from nothing. Right now, we literally have no props. We don't have anything, we just have a location. And we're using the, the location and the environment in which we were forced into to, to, to bring everything together, okay? So now I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna change myself over to this side, right? I'm gonna use the leading lines from this lake right here, okay, that are leading to my subject to capture that shot. I'm gonna go ahead and put this light behind her so I can get a back shot, a backlight shot. I'm gonna have her back lit just like so. And this is gonna go ahead and hit the back of our subject. So we're gonna come from here, hit the back of our subject and illuminate her back. So now it's gonna give her a hair light, make her nice and lit, okay? We have a backlight, bam. We have this front light right here. It's gonna also still be going and gravitating towards our subject. We're gonna raise it up just a little bit. Boom, and we're gonna be shooting right here. We're gonna be using this leading lines, right? Okay, y'all remembering the leading lines from this, this lake and this bank right here and the bushes and the horizon line and the sky that are going, that are leading your eyes, okay, to the subject. Leading lines basically tell your eyes where to go. Leading lines tell your eyes where to look, okay? So these leading lines are telling your eyes to look right at her. So we're gonna go ahead and frame up the shot just like so. We're placing her right in the middle of the lines. So these lines are getting, going from big to small. Going from big to small. You see how she's right in the middle of this space? It's leading your eyes across the screen to her. So boom, we'll see it, three, two, one. Yes, three, two, one. Yes, three, two, one. Yes, three, two, one. And while doing this, you guys, I am not forgetting about what I just learned about the rule of thirds. I'm still putting her in the middle frame. You gotta learn that rule of thirds first. This is a framework, you guys. This is the six pieces of framework. Rule of thirds, all right? Then you learn leading lines. You rule of thirds, you master it. It's not that hard to master. You, you can learn it really, really quickly, okay? And then leading lines, you put the leading lines with the rule of thirds. Now you got a, a banger photo, okay? Leading lines, I'm gonna do one more with the leading lines, just like so. These lines are leading. I put her right in the center of where the lines are leading towards. There you go, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, and one. One more. Three, two, and one. There we go. Literally, so these lines are all leading towards the subject. So I hope you guys get the framework of leading lines now. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the third one. Let's do the it. Third one, we're gonna be talking about depth, okay? So depth, well, not necessarily depth, more so framing to create depth. So framing to create depth. You can use something in your foreground to create a frame on your subject to be able to, you know, give the viewer somewhere to focus on, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a view and kind of show you guys how, how I'm gonna do this. So right now, I have my lighting already kind of set up. I'm gonna be using this grass right here to frame up the subject, right? The grass on the floor, yes. But I'm gonna use the grass to frame up the subject for you guys to now be able to, you know what I'm saying, create some type of depth and also create a focus point for the, for, for the viewers, okay? So we're gonna go down here. We're gonna get low with it. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna use these blades of grass. I'm I literally, I see this right here. I'm using my environment, look. I see this little piece of grass, little strand right here. I'm gonna use this to frame it up. Put her right next to it. <laughs> I'm gonna put her right next to it just like so nice deep in there three two one three two and one literally you guys I'm using these blades of grass to create framing even this one that's standing right next to her you could have it in there you can have it out of there you can you could tear it pull it up and let's say for example you want to hold it yourself to create some form of depth you create that foreground you leave the background nice wide and open just like so, and let's say for example, I could even hold this up and shoot right through it. You can make framing and composition out of literally anything. I have this blade of grass right here, I'm gonna shoot right through it. Just like so. Three, two, and one. Three, two, and one, hold it. One more, hold it. I'm gonna zoom in two. Three, two, hold it. Three, two, and one. Ooh, I ain't gonna lie, I like these down shots too. I'm gonna shoot right through the grass, you guys. Like an anthill right here too. Three, two, and one. Yes, three, two, and one. Three, two, and one. 
Yes, literally, you guys. So, framing, bro. Number three, framing. You can literally use anything as a frame. You can use the grass, you can use a tree, you can use some rocks, you can use some dirt. Anything to help you create a frame. I created like a bottom border of a frame and then the sky and everything else made up the remainder of the frame, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the fourth framework. So with symmetry and patterns, you guys, symmetry, when I think of symmetry, I, I you, you you kind of have to use the rule of thirds grid. Once again, like it kind of all continues to go back to the rule of thirds. When you guys ask me, how do I do this myself? It kind of all continues to go back to the rule of thirds. When I'm creating symmetry, right? I'm creating symmetry, I'm looking mostly at how I can fit the frame, okay? Let's say for example, I have my subject here. If she has blank space on the right side, which they call negative space, right? If she has blank space on the right side, then there should be some blank space on the left side, okay? So when I'm shooting, if I have open space, everything will come out symmetrical as long as there's nothing over here and nothing over here. But let's say for example, if we were to add something into the frame, such as, such as a, 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 a bush or something of that nature, it will make it unsymmetrical, if that makes sense, okay? It will make it a lot, it will make, it will make it unsymmetrical, okay? So in this video, we're creating something out of nothing. We're gonna go ahead and give her a prop to help you guys see how it can be unsymmetrical. So if, for example, if our subject was to, let's say for when she's posing, she has all of her body direction all to one way, it would come out as unsymmetrical, okay? So I would never really like place her to where she has too much going one direction. Let's say for example, she has her legs going this way and her arms going this way and her body going, this, everything's pointing like this. This is not symmetrical. Okay, so she's all pointing this way. This is not symmetrical at all. I have one point going this direction. I have two points going this direction. And I only have one point going that direction. I need it to be symmetrical. I need it to be balanced. So when I think about this, I, when I'm framing her up, I'm looking at her body. I'm looking at her body language. I'm looking at her face. And I'm trying to see how can this be symmetrical? Let's see, let me see. So as you guys can see right here with this pose, what she has is she has one point coming to the right. One, two point coming to the right, three points coming to the right, right? Now over on this side, she has one point coming to the right, right? Two points coming to the right. She has her head turned this way, so it has three points. So that creates a symmetrical, that makes it symmetrical. If you guys are looking and trying to see the points, is that I, I call it a point system. I had to see how many points, what, like where, where are all the points going? How can I make this symmetrical? All right, okay, okay, all right, you guys, look. So look, this shoulder, this is what I mean. I'm gonna put it on my iPad so it's a little bit easier for you guys to understand. This elbow, right, is one point and it's pointing this way, right? You see that? This hand is one point and it's pointing this way, right? This shoulder, one point, pointing this way. You see that? This elbow pointing this way. Y'all see that? Literally, then we have this hip down here, which is pointing this way. So currently we have an uneven amount, but then we have her eyes, which is her face, her head, which is pointing this way, just like so. So these are the points I'm saying, this is how you create that symmetry. If I were to have her eyes looking this way, this would be unsymmetrical. It would be too many points on each side. So right here, we have one point right here, two, three, and then we have one, two, three. So overall, this makes this image symmetrical. You guys see what I'm saying? This makes it symmetrical. I know on the video it might not make no sense, but this is what I'm talking about. Another example of this for you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and create another one right here. We're gonna use the color yellow, right? Another example of this, you guys see in the full body, so you guys are able to see exactly what I'm talking about, right? So, just like so, we have it to where um, this right here is an elbow, as we can see, right? And this elbow is pointing this way. This shoulder, this way. This elbow, this way. See that right there? This hand, this way, right? We have these feet, which are going this way, and this hip, which is going this way. And we have the eyes and the face going this way, right? So all of these, are the various different points that we have to match up to create that symmetry, all right? So we have one, two, and three, one, two, and three. So we have three on each side. So this makes for an even image, okay? If she had too many points going one way, it would be not symmetrical. If she had four points going right and two going left, it would be a good image, you know what I'm saying? But you could 
you can you can make it a lot you can make it a lot better you can make it a lot more if you add just that much more symmetry like boom this is a good pose right here so i would have her turn her head this way because i would have her turn her head this way because if you look at it she has one point this way with her hand one point this way with her with her left hand she has her head turned that way so for example one two three right so one two three and then now for this side she has one her foot going this way her um, bottom half going this way that's two and her arm going that way that's three if she turns her head right it it looks like a good image but it kind of goes against itself multiple times because she, she has her bottom half going this way and her right half going this way you try to create an s curve you guys you don't want to create a like a, a, a multiple curve one way i have her look this way because this creates an s so her her face direction going this way is going down is going curve is going curve if she turned her head right turn her head right it would be like this it would be a c curve i want an s curve i don't want a c curve this is a c the whole body is just going one direction it's not a bad pose don't get me wrong no pose is a bad pose this is just how i frame up the pose okay so i try to get it to where all of it is going nice and flowing so go ahead look right it's like so this is a nice pose right here because everything is nice and, and balanced i'm going to go ahead and scale in my rule of third like how i showed you guys don't move i'm gonna move my light over just a little bit so i can get some back fill so that way it can separate her from the background just like so bring this light in a little bit closer just so it can light her up a little bit better just like so i'm going to go ahead and frame it up from everything i've taught you guys today boom an amazing image look at that boom don't move don't move so I'm gonna go ahead and have you like kind of bring that arm in a little bit more and then bring this one in like two, like like that, like that, like that, like that. Like that. Oh, that's cute, that's cute, that's cute. And I'm gonna have this kind of come in. So like I tell you guys, symmetry and depth. So now she has like a, if I, if I wanna zoom in on her face, just like so, I have background and I have foreground. Foreground, this little piece right here, middle ground is her face and then the background is this extra piece of fabric right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in just like so. You guys see the foreground, middle ground, background, just like so. Eye contact. Yeah, it's nice framing. And every single time I take a shot. Don't move, don't move. And every single time I take a shot, you guys, I always line. You guys might see, if you're watching right now, I always line her face up with that third grid. And it makes a perfect image every single time, you guys. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm showing you guys the game, man. If you guys don't learn a thing or two, that is on you. We're gonna move on to the next final framework. I might squish these last ones together because the next one is negative space and depth, okay? So if you guys don't know what negative space is, negative space is when you leave a empty space around your subject to enphase the subject, okay? It's gonna create a nice and minimalistic look. So it's gonna be like, oh, I'm just kind of standing here, tight vibes. And then you have a depth, right? Depth creates layers within an image, and it, which is foreground, middle ground, background, negative space, right? Number five is negative space, okay? So with negative space, with negative space, you're gonna, you're literally gonna create space on purpose. So you're gonna probably, you can probably scale out, have a wide, a wide image, and kind of just have your subject just there. Create a negative space, like say for example, like you're just holding it and you're kind of like looking off this way. That way, that way, yeah, like that, like that, boom. And I'm gonna zoom, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back out, right, you guys? Look, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna back out, just like so. I'm gonna zoom my camera out, I'm at 24 mil. And I'm gonna take the shot, just like so. I'm gonna turn my light over a little bit so that we can kind of get this side of her face because she's looking over. And I'm literally gonna leave it out and open on purpose. I'm not zooming in to get no detail, this is negative space. You're allowing the space to be a part of it okay you guys she's only getting covering about 20 percent of the frame you're allowing her to only cover about 20 percent of the frame because any other time you would want to fill it like this this is not negative space that's a regular shot this is negative space right here you got negative space on the both on the right side and the left side of your subject turn it toward horizontal same thing negative space and this negative space creates the image it's like an establishing shot in a, for a music video. When you're doing a music video, you get an establishing shot to be able to establish and show the location that you're at. The same thing with a negative space shot. <laughs> but like I was saying, with a music video, you get an establishing shot to show the location. 
you get some negative space shots when doing photography, which is also still an establishing shot, but I'm just showing you guys like what it's actually called. Like this is negative space. So you're using the open space to, to compose your image, okay? Because you guys, we're, the, the video is about composition. This is some, these are just some of the things that I use personally to get perfect composition every single time in all of my images. Like each of these may not be, need to be used for every single photo shoot, but they're good to have in the back of your head for the time that you do need them. There might, there's gonna be a time where you do need each one of these frameworks and you're gonna need to know when you can bring them out. Like let's say for example, in, in different scenarios for different shoots, a different framework is gonna work for that different shoot. When we were on the pier, you guys, I used foreground, middle ground, background. Okay, I also use the depth. I also use, um, I, al I always, every single shoot I ever really have, I use, I use rule of thirds. Okay, the rule of thirds grid and I use framing, basically in every single one, all right? And then throughout, you can kind of mix and match whichever frameworks work best for you and your shooting style, okay? So for the last one after negative space, you guys, we have depth, I'm pretty sure, which is foreground. Yeah, we have depth for the last one, which is foreground, middle ground, and background. I'm gonna have her create some foreground. I'll bring you guys in like a little bit closer. And she's gonna create some foreground with her um, with her scarf. So I'm gonna have her hold her scarf up kind of like relatively like a chest length. <laughs> that thing going crazy. There we go. So we have this scarf to be used as foreground. All right, you guys, we're gonna be taking some nice close shots. We're gonna take a, uh, uh, like some like chest up shots with like low key head shots, but not fully. And then we have foreground, we have middle ground, which is the subject, and we have the background, which is gonna be behind her, okay? So right here, we're gonna be talking about depth, all right? Literally, boom. See right here, we got that foreground. We're gonna be using this as the foreground, her as the middle ground, and that as the background. We're gonna go ahead and scale in just like so. Nice zoomed. The background is blurred and nice and bokeh. Air co eye contact. Yeah, it's just like so. One more. Yeah, there we go. So her, even her hair is acting in as foreground as well. We have another plane coming, you guys. One moment. Maybe you like have one where it's like you like this. Like, what if you're like this? Yo, yo, yo. I have it like kind of like bundled up by your face. Yeah, like that, like that. Yeah. Yeah, there we go, boom. So like even with this one, foreground, middle ground, background can be used here as well. We have this, we're creating, like we're literally creating nothing, something out of nothing. Like we have nothing to use but this scarf. So we're gonna use this scarf. This is foreground, her, herself, middle ground, and then her, even her hair in the back is background. So on whatever scale that you're shooting on, you can zoom in, you always have foreground, middle ground, and background in some way, shape, or form, okay? Right here, foreground is the middle. I'm gonna have background, I did, I'm gonna do a side shot which also has a little bit of framing added in there as well. So literally, boom. I'm creating a shot right now that literally has each part of the framework that we worked on today. Every part of the framework is here right now in this one shot right here. One more. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, three, two, one. Three, two, one, yes, one more, three, two, and one. Literally, you guys, foreground, middle ground, one more. Literally, nice, clean shots, okay? Foreground, middle ground, background, framing. These were the frameworks, the six frameworks of composition, you guys. These are the six frameworks of composition that I use on every single one of my shoots. I've been getting this question a lot. You guys have been asking me, what do I do? How do I do it? When do I do it? How do I know to do it? How do I blah, 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 blah. So I'm gonna be making a video to answer every single one of you guys' questions, and this is the first one of that series. So let me know down in the description, you guys, down in the bio, down, down in the description, down in the bio, LOL. Down in the comments, you guys, what more do you guys wanna see from me? What more questions do you guys have? What are some things you guys want me to break down that I do, that I may not know that I do, but you guys know that I do? How do I this, how do I that? Just ask the questions. You ask and you shall receive, you know what I'm saying? But until further ado, you know what I'm saying? All the links to everything will be down below in the description. Um, if you guys want like a one pager, I might create a one pager for like a little uh, photography cheat sheet. It's gonna be coming out soon. The ebook, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be really either really cheap, like ninety nine cents or free, one or one of one of the two. Because I don't like you know charging y'all for stuff. But if you guys do want the PNG strap, that'll be down below as well. I think it's like twenty dollars right now, running a sale, or usually thirty five. If you guys want to check that out, you guys check that out as well. I'm gonna link it to the video. Check it out, and then follow me on Instagram, taxi.png, and also follow K, pretty little K. Yeah, I'm gonna put her Instagram down below as I always do. Um, and yeah, make sure to join the Discord, man. 
vibe out, man. I'm trying to do so much stuff for you guys, like as we continue to like you know try to transition into full time photographer and full time content creator for you guys. I'm gonna be able to make these videos all the time for you guys. I'm trying to come back to back to back to back to back, hitting. But <sighs> make sure to share a photographer. Make sure to share this with a photographer, videographer, or a model that may find this information is helpful. Until next time. Taxi. Ah! These are like actually really cool shots. Yes. It's really cool too because I, I, I slowed down. I wasn't just shooting. Like I wasn't just random doing stuff. Like we actually like really got the shot. Like we like slowed it down and really like. Ah! <laughs> we really slowed it down and did it. Taxi. I ain't gonna lie. This is crazy. You gonna fight me? I'm sorry. Oh my gosh! Framework. Framework, man. Yeah. We broke down the frameworks. The six frameworks of composition. Yes! Oh! <laughs> Did you see that one? <laughs> the six frameworks of composition, bro. Yo! Like, these was like... Yeah, you look fitted a little piece. part is we didn't even take that many photos that's the best part we didn't even take a lot of photos and they came out good there we go yep you guys are running a two light setup right now y'all see the setup y'all see where they at look at the shots oh yep yep oh yeah these are actually hard three two one three two one oh the framework here is like actually really cool don't move you got it bro this is hard yeah bro my settings are f250 I mean, well, f f f 5.0, and then my ISO is at 160, and then my shutter is at 250. But these are hard. If you guys were wondering, my settings were um, 250 f 250. I mean, f 2 f5 <laughs> f5. My shutter was 250, and then my ISO was 160. So, yeah. Oh, well, who are you? What do you do? What, who are you? What do you do? It's Pre Lil K. Hey. Um, I'm a dancer slash model and choreographer. Mm. 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 Well, so what inspired you to begin your dancing career? Actually, I was about, I would say, like six years old. Mm -hmm. And I watched Honey for the first time. If y'all don't, don't know that movie, then educate yourself real quick. Um, it just opened my whole mind to a whole new world. So after that, I just started dancing nonstop and now where I'm at right now. So like when you, kind of like when you started, when, like when would you say you started taking it serious? I think- Like competing and stuff. I competed in high school, but I started, <laughs> I started uh, dancing for real, maybe 2021. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how did you kind of like overcome that initial fear of like breaking into the dance industry? Like, you know, starting out, getting into the dance industry, not necessarily knowing, you know, probably much for real. Was it just like, like, was it just kind of like the love of dance that just overtook you that just like helped you kind of like navigate through it or like you have like a set plan as you know people what got you like how, how'd you get into the in the industry of dance i would say it was a blind spot for me it kind of just happened out of nowhere i had opportunity to be a go-go dancer and that gave me so much opportunity that i did not think it was going to i got my confidence from it i got my technique from it i learned from the other dancers around me so that definitely was the reason why i think i got the doors open from being a professional dancer so what would you say like would be like your most memorable moment throughout throughout both i guess dancing and modeling something that's kind of like pivotal we'll, we'll let we'll let this pass guys we're by an airport right now so yeah like the most one of the most like one of the one thing that was like probably the most pivotal moment for you like you know in both modeling and dancing i would say when I actually danced on live television, mm. that was probably the most like iconic moment for me. Yeah. Um, also with modeling, I did brand shoots. I did, you know, random shoots with other people that I never met before, and it just opened up my like confidence to be way more out there than I used to be when I was younger. So what would you say for like other people who are kind of like wanting to get into that space too? Like what's a little bit of like, you know, maybe some inspiration or maybe something that could like, you know, make them feel like, like, oh, I want to do it, but eh, I don't know. Fear is your best friend, I believe. Um, if you're scared to do it, that means you probably should do it. Just go out there and be completely like different. That. You don't have to be in a hole by yourself. You don't have to be kind of like to yourself, like expand your living. You only have one life. Do the things that make you scared. Do the things that make you feel like it's not going to happen because you'll know what your outcome's going to be. So, 
so it's, like, it's, it's really like a why not you know it's like it's like a why not the same reason that you're like sitting there not gonna do it is the same reason why you could do it like the all the time you're sitting there and thinking about oh but 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 and but and but and 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 but all that time that you spent those four months those five months that three years that you spent talking about and but you could have made a dent into the thing that you wanted to do you could have figured out whether it's gonna work or not within that same time you know what i'm saying and like one thing i love to say is like if you're gonna fail fail fast you know what i'm saying like if you're gonna do it do it fast like oh my god i want to do this thing but i don't know i might fail okay if you're gonna if you're gonna try it and you think you might fail then fail fast so try it and if you do fail fail fast and get back up and try the next thing because uh, if you do it fast enough bro like it didn't even it didn't really you didn't really you didn't sit in it enough to feel that hurt because you just you you were able to keep going you kept pushing through it and you continue to elevate and grow who would you say you know um as someone that inspires you like within your industry um in the industry like that works with me right now yeah i would say um i do have like a content family right now in the works um definitely they motivate me all the time they see my they see how good i could be and how good i will be and the moment i like step down for a second and i like, doubt myself they're on my side right there waiting for me to go back up to help so, push you back up i like that support system for sure it's always good to have a solid support system for real so everybody gets those times where they're kind of like down or they're feeling like they don't really like you know they can't keep going what are some things that you would possibly say for someone, you know, like, even yourself, like, how do you keep yourself motivated, like, physically and mentally? Like, you know, I know you say your support groups, I'm pretty sure that's a portion of it, but, like, when it comes to, like, you know, you're, you're out here by yourself, man, you're on that grind alone, you know what I'm saying? Like, what would you say to someone who needs a little bit of that extra motivation? Like, how can they motivate themselves and help themselves, like, kind of get out there? Um, I would say meditation. Mm. I feel like everyone needs to find their own peace, depending on what you do. You like to read, read something that helps you get better. You like to dance. Me personally, dancing is my way out. I put all my emotions into dancing. It's a way of telling how you feel without being verbal at all. Mm. So that's the, that's my get up. The moment I feel down, I completely put a song on that I can relate to at the moment and I dance my heart out. And then I, f I remember who, who I am. So I continue to con continue to keep going nonstop. I don't stop, even when there's times that I completely want to give up. Cause we all we all like are humans. We do want to give up a lot, but it's your mindset and your mentality that can get you where you want to go. So definitely find what brings you peace. Regarding if it's meditating, dancing, riding your bike, writing a song, whatever you want to do is clearly your life. It's your world. So what would you say would be like the most difficult skill, technique, or quality for you to master um, when like, you know, what was like, what was the hardest thing for you to kind of like master when like, when learning, like, I guess like not necessarily when learning to dance, but like, what is the, like, what is the thing or quality that was most important for you to master to like, kind of like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like in your, like th through dancing. Like what was something that you feel like that? Oh, if I would if I would never got that, or if I would never did that, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have elevated my dancing. I feel like technique, mm. for sure. Mm. Um, there's so many different forms of dancing that no one thinks of, and you have to put yourself out there. If you stick to one thing, you're not gonna go far because you only have one skill. When it comes to dancing, there's a whole different world for dance. So the more you learn, the more techniques that you find you can expand so much more mm. and have so much more opportunities. That's what I'm actually struggling right now. You can combine right some now. things. Yeah. You can like combine different worlds, like whether it's Caribbean and it's Afro, mm -hmm. it's Latina, Latina, like, okay, Latin dance. I like that, I like that. Oh man, yeah, that's, that's yeah. It's like, it's kind of like literally like with photography, like there's so many different types, but it's like you can take different frameworks and different techniques from different artists within the industry and kind of collaborate it into your own like thing mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like different like so like with dance like you know having different techniques like oh I, maybe i saw this little jerk in here or i saw this jig over here and i kind of want to like put this together but in my own spin in my own way with my own technique so how do you personally balance you know creative expression um within your industry industry like within within the industry's expectations like, you know what they expect of like dancers so like how do you balance your creative expression within that I would say, I say this to everybody, when it comes to dancing and the industry, don't even listen to the industry. Listen to yourself. Listen to your heart. What you want to do. The industry is a very scary place. 
it can you know manipulate you in ways it could do so much things follow your journey do not follow anyone else's it will take you farther than you think at first when I started I thought I had to be a certain person I had to have a certain look I had to do this and that to impress a certain person I don't do that no more I do what makes me who I am now yeah so definitely don't take nothing from the industry just keep working on who you are and it, it will show and you will grow from it I promise and I honestly feel like that's within every industry bro it's like industries are gonna have standards you know it's like it's gonna be up to you whether you accept those standards or not like the, every industry is gonna have standards bro and I don't know y'all know me I break every rule in photography on purpose bro because it's who I am I'm not one of the regular sheep. I got to go against the grain. You know, and it's like, I feel like you grow so much more going against it because you know what works. If you do exactly what the industry is doing, you know exactly what works. Like, you know that that works. So why not try something different? Because if you try something different and that doesn't work, you can just go back to do what, what works. If this form of dance or this form of photography or this form of whatever you're doing works, you know that. Now, what about this part that someone hasn't explored yet? What about this type of dance or this type of choreography that someone hasn't explored yet? You know what I'm saying? What about this type of music that someone hasn't really danced to yet or haven't really, you know, expressed themselves through yet? Like, let's try that. You know what I mean? And I feel like that will allow you to really, like, expand your own vision and expand your own expression when it comes to whatever it is that you're doing, whatever your business is. I feel like from everyone that I talk to on this podcast, bro, I feel like everyone can learn something from someone. I feel like everyone. Like, I, I just had a scientist on here, bro, and you can learn so much from her you can i have she's okay, a dancer you can learn so much from her like bro and it's like it's just you can learn so much from everybody's different perspectives within their industries and like i tell you guys just for the people who are the hardest workers in their industry you know what i'm saying i personally feel like Kay is like one of the hardest working dancers that i've seen bro because she's dancing when no one's watching she may not record everything or post everything but she's dancing when no one's watching and to me within that industry she's killing it okay it's like when people are watching or they're not watching she's practicing it's like are you how are you are you really in the gym like that you know like are you really how dedicated are you to your craft like you're not really cooking like that you know what i'm saying if it whatever it is that you're wanting to do basketball photography football dance weightlifting gym whatever it is are you really in the field like that practicing when no one's watching are you are you are you putting in the work behind the scenes for you to get ahead in life in both front of and behind the scenes? Because a lot of people only put on in front of the scenes. When somebody's watching is when they do their best. And that's when they feel like they're gonna get the accolades and things like that because somebody's watching. But the things that really matter are the hours that you put in alone. The time that you put in when you're by yourself and the hours that you put in when you're by yourself alone is what truly matters because that's what's gonna take you far, okay? That is what's gonna take you far. You're gonna be out here you know, doing all these things in front of people trying to, you know, trying to, trying to, trying to fake the funk, fake it till you make it per se. And when you go home, you're not really living like that. You're not really as hard of a worker as you say you are. That's why I try my hardest to show you guys the real, real, bro. You know what I'm saying? As hard of a worker as I show you guys, as hard of a worker as I am. Maybe even a little bit more of a harder of a worker behind the scenes because I'm not able to post everything I do. <laughs> but... You guys got to, you know, be true to yourself. And that all comes with self-accountability because you go to sleep with yourself at nighttime. You know how much work you put in that day. You know how much work you didn't put in that day. You know how much work you you showed to the world that you put in, but you did, did you really do it? You got up at 6 a.m. and went to the gym. Did you, did, you, did, you, did you work for real? Did you really, you know, add the discipline to the consistency or were you just consistent? Did you just show up or were you actually doing the workouts to the efficiency in which you know you need to do it in the sense of, yeah, you, you, you logged into YouTube today and watched a few videos and some webinars, but did you take notes or were you just there? Did you just show up or you took notes? You went to dance class and all that, but did you really take notes? Were you really practicing or were you just watching? So it's like, were you just like, how, how, how dedicated are you? It's like you got to be dedicated to your craft and your thing that you want to do. You have to be able to, but like, it sounds crazy like on some like, oh, die for it. That's why I say dedicated the way it does because you got to be dedicated to this. Like you have to be willing to put your last into whatever it is that you're wanting to do. That all comes with being the hardest worker in your industry, man. So to end off, to, to build it off, what advice would you give to someone that are just starting out their own dancing or modeling journey? I would say to just, you know, take it one step at a time. Don't rush it. I know everyone wants the, like, the life of living flawlessly and going out there and partying and all that. It will come when it's time to go. But don't rush anything. 
and also it's not, it's not always what it seems it's also not always what it seems mm -hmm. a lot of people think that it's a lot more than it is it's not always what it seems it seems cool it seems fun it seems this it seems that but it's not always that yeah. um take some classes you know if you're a beginner dancer make it like a priority to take at least tw one class a week can make it a, co a consistent thing don't like give up if you if you can't dance if you can't do the move keep pressing at home like it's a it's a it's a work let's practice it's not gonna come to you right at once it's gonna take time and then modeling as well if you have a friend that models ask them questions you know go to a shoot with them see how they do it practice with them in the mirror go to like, some workshops you know what I'm saying anything helps you just have to put the your foot out the door to actually do it if you just stay behind it you're not going to get anywhere in life you have to actually take the step to actually go into your future so just like i said one step at a time literally you got to start man you got to start and that was png unfiltered man png unfiltered episode three which we kept it light today you know what i'm saying we may get more which we're, we're, we're experimenting with the links of the videos and things of that nature but let me know what more questions you guys want me to ask our next contestant who should i have what industry should i talk to next who like what what, what do you guys want to hear who do you guys want to hear from where do you guys want me to go what do you guys want me to do let me know down in the comments below you guys i'm your host taxi png and this was hey little k hello and png unfiltered man i love you guys so much Taxi. <laughs> Make sure to share it with a photographer, videographer, or a model that may find the information is helpful. Until next time. Taxi. <laughs> so long, farewell to you, my friends. Goodbye for now. Until we meet again, I say so long, farewell to you, my friends. Goodbye.